All right, what is going on, my wonderful ladies and gentlemen of the world? Today we are here to speak regarding the topic I don't think anybody would have seen. Well, maybe you might have seen it coming if you followed my Twitter, because I did talk about it a little bit. Dota 2, the international, I actually tuned into it. I saw a news article regarding a specific game. If you were watching, I'm sure you know all about it. If you're interested in Dota 2 at all, I'm sure you know all about it. Uh, it was the game, the very first game of EG versus Ehome, and apparently it was just this like massive spectacle of amazingness. I need to go back and watch it again now that I understand more about it. But like I watched the video, and I was just kind of skipping through it. Like I don't, I don't understand. I don't know what's going on here. Like announcers are getting so hyped, the crowd is erupting. Like this is a, apparently amazing, and I'm just sitting here like. There are pretty colors flying around everywhere. It's kind of cool, but uh, I don't, I don't. Why, why are people getting hype? Why is this amazing? I don't fucking understand anything. But because of that, I started to watch the actual stream for the international. I basically caught the last. I think I got a little bit of the third to last day, but I watched the majority of the last two days because, unfortunately unfor uh, for me, they started after I got off work. So. Tuning into them, you know, like, now after watching them, I understand more about the mechanics. Like, I kind of looked up the website a little bit, but I mostly just looked at it to kind of browse through the different characters, look at some interesting stuff, uh, see what kind of things they had going on. And, I mean, obviously, there's a massive list of characters. And so, while I understand the basics of the genre now, you know, like, how you want to aim for the towers, obviously, because those are the first line of defenses. Um, you want to, you have the different roles to fill. So, you have, like, the support people, the people that basically just... Exi not necessarily exists solely to uh what word am i looking for uh who exist basically to kind of stay in the quote-unquote lanes that they call them and contest them that's what i'm looking at and so just kind of to harass and prevent anybody from you know going too far uh through the territory and getting too bold that kind of a thing and then you have the people who essentially exist to just wander about on their own and grind and just level up, get gold, get items, and become these massive powerhouses that can make or break a fight. And so, while I don't understand all the minutia of the entire thing, where you're looking at character matchups, um, combinations, tiers, all that stuff, I certainly have no concept of that at the moment. I do now know how the flow of a game goes. I know a lot more about certain characters that were picked quite a bit, things like Faceless Void, um, and so now, you know, and I certainly understand the excitement around it. And I need to go back and watch that uh, match again now that I do have that understanding of the basic mechanics. So then, and I'm sure I'll have a fully different experience with it than before, where I was basically just like, huh, people are getting really excited. That's cool. All right, moving on. Uh, but the biggest thing that I came away from was how much of just, it was a, it was an event, right? Like, that's the best way I can say it is that. It wasn't just a tournament. It was a spectacle. The production values were off the charts. Anybody that's watched it knows what I'm talking about. Um, and basically, you know, obviously, focusing mainly on the FGC as I do, it, obviously, I have to compare those. And so when you're looking at EVO, I mean, that was the biggest EVO to date, right? But it still just felt like a tournament. Whereas the International was not only a tournament. Again, it was an event. It was a spectacle. It was something that you weren't only watching solely for the players themselves. They had analysts, they had uh, multiple booths of commentators in multiple languages. Uh, they had, you know, the soundproof booths, which hopefully will become a thing as we move forward if we continue to use in-house announcers, because I cannot imagine how annoying that would get to have to actually hear that while you're playing. Um, but it's just, you know, the production values are night and day there, and again, it just, Evo felt like it was a tournament in a bigger venue whereas the international again it was an event it was a spectacle it was something special and now you're looking at it and obviously the budgetary differences are astronomical the prize pool alone for this entire event was like 23 million dollars or something like that which is ridiculous and I'm gonna get into that in a bit but one of the first things I saw well not one of the first things I saw but at, I think it was at the end of the second to last day they had an announcement for a new character and what preceded it was this big performance of this entire like troop of performers uh on tribal drums and then that preceded this acrobatic kind of like martial art exhibition utilizing different weapons and then after that came a trailer for a new character which is basically a, the monkey king um 
And it was just like, you know, again, night and day where you have somebody attached to a company walk out on stage and be like, hey guys, what's up? Look forward to my upcoming game. Here's a trailer about something. And they play the trailer and then it's done like that. And then it, you have this thing where, again, this entire musical performance followed by trained acrobats going nuts on stage. Then you get the trailer. Like, that's fantastic. It's amazing. And it's hype. And that's what money can get you. And that's why, you know, the criticism surrounding Mr. Wizard only going for the quote-unquote popular games are ridiculous because that's obviously that's that not necessarily the end game but that's where you want to be that's the kind of thing you want to be able to do but that's the thing that you cannot do without the budget behind it uh so just you know seeing that was amazing fantastic and so before i actually get into kind of you know my discussion around dota in general i wanted to talk about their battle pass so this 23 million dollar prize pool i don't know if it's 100 percent based around uh the proceeds from this battle pass but what the battle pass is is this it costs 9.99 and it's, there's others I, I don't again i don't really understand it without understanding the mechanics of the game but there are also further things you can purchase that give you like battle levels again i don't know what the battle levels actually do but the basic thing that you can get is 9.99 and you get like one cause or three cosmetics one from each pool and then i think every like x levels you can get another cosmetic from that pool and that's I assume what spending further money to get those battle levels is for and just seeing how upfront they are about it the very first thing you see battle pass this is what you get 9.99 25 percent of this goes directly to the uh prize pool for the international tournament series and that's it and on, in contrast you have street fighter 5 coming out here giving you a single stage that's it for $9.99 or you can get the entire thing for $25 which gives you the stage three costumes a color that nobody's gonna want to use because it's ugly as hell <laughs> that's being a little bit judgmental um but I think that was it right the stage the three costumes and the color for $25 but then the big sticking point was that they were just like after a certain amount of revenue we'll start donating to the pot of Capcom Cup there was no specific specificity behind it. There was nothing that said, again, 25% of what you spend on this goes directly to the international. No questions, nothing else. That's it. You know exactly where your money is going. That's what you need for anything like that. If you're purchasing something at a premium price, which, you know, like it isn't really necessarily worth it just for the money itself, which three costumes a color and a stage for $25 hell no that's not worth it to me that's half of a game basically and um, so it's just that thing where it's like okay if I'm donating to the prize pool of Capcom Cup if I am looking to improve the experience of the Capcom Pro Tour perfect I understand you know like I'm spending some of my money to go toward that as well but it's just that point where it was like after a certain amount of money that we get that we will not specify that we will not tell you what it is for all you know it could never be reached <laughs> then we'll start putting money into the capcom pro tour like what the hell kind of a situation is that to get people to actually buy into this uh and so it's again just night and day the difference between a company that knows what the fuck they're doing and a company that does not and it's crazy because they're obviously modeling it after it it's so obvious where they're getting the ideas from from the bigger esports from the thing that gets you know millions of views millions of dollars there's massive uh hype leading up to it obviously we know where the ideas are coming from so why do you are you bastardizing them so much and making them just so bad in contrast when the i like the concept is right there in front of you just use it and I don't know, I don't want to go off too much on it, but it's just that kind of shit is just like, after seeing this, it's even more unforgivable the scenario surrounding it. But again, I'm here to talk about the international. I don't really want to go into everything else. So, um, what was, oh, the biggest game for me now that, because I mean, obviously, like I mentioned, I need to go back and I need to watch EG versus Ehome now that I understand more about it and I will probably uh, get the hype this time. But the final game of Digital Chaos against EG, that was my big hype. That was what kept me 
uh, watching the tournament was because it was so it was just it nail biting. Digital Chaos barely pulled it out. EG was like rushing into their base, and it looked like it was over. There was this. I think it was a character called Terror Blade, just going fucking nuts, absolutely bonkers. Looked unstoppable throughout the entire match, and now he's in their base and he's going nuts. And suddenly he gets stopped. Suddenly the tides turn. And now Digital Chaos rushes EG's base. And what looked like a sure thing for EG suddenly swings all the way around. And through, you know, just pure willpower, DC managed to pull it out and win. And that was just like, holy shit, this is everything I love about competitive gaming where it's not just a wash one way or the other where even when it looks hopeless through the utilization of tactics and just quick thinking and pure raw skill you can pull it out from the depths of hell and just reach out and grab that victory and take it like that's amazing that's phenomenal it was so amazing to watch and the shitty thing is that seeing that kind of thing oh I actually wrote that down the shitty thing about this kind of thing is where you know you're watching this high level play this amazing play and all that makes you want to do is be like god I want to play this game I want to experience that and then you go in and you realize like there's none of that teamwork <laughs> there's none of that just like amazing turnaround kind of play it's just like people are off doing their own thing everybody wants to be the hero nobody wants to be uh, the person that facilitates the hero actually managing to do what they did, which, again, it's impossible for that person to be a hero without the proper support behind them. And it's the exact, like, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch recently, and due to that, I've been watching a lot of tournament Overwatch. And the differences between tournament Overwatch and my own experience are night and day. There's no, They are completely different games. And I can't imagine it's any different with Dota where it'd just be like frustrating and hair pulling and just like, what are you thinking with these actions that you're doing, with these this feeding that you're doing by just going in and dying because you think you are like the all-powerful god of the world or something. And in reality, you are nothing. You're going like 1v5 expecting to come out ahead. Like, well, that will never work. That will never work. What are you thinking, man? Come on. And I know that's exactly how it's going to be if I ever even tried to get into Dota. Um, and that's just, that's such a disappointment when you see that kind of thing, this, you know, this aspect that's so exciting and understanding that in order to get that, you can't just go and play the game. You have to go and learn the game, grind out the game, become amazing at it. But not only that, not only do you have to worry about your personal performance, you need to find people who are also the same as you, who are willing to, uh potentially you know play something that isn't necessarily to not i don't want to say that that are like-minded like you understand that the team is what makes it all come together and play out like those games it's not just any single individual uh performance making sure that everything just you know comes together and wins it has to be everybody at an equal skill level making it all happen and so you have to kind of have like a team in order to make it work properly, you can't just go in by yourself and think, oh yeah, sure, eventually this game will end up being amazing. Like, probably not. <laughs> That's really not how team-based games work when playing with randoms, and it's such a disappointment. I don't really understand. Uh, I mean, there's just, you know, you, there are so many people who, again, believe themselves to be like the pinnacle of possible play, and the only reason they're at the rank they're at right now is because they're held back by the people they get matched up with and it's not their fault it's never their fault they're always performing well it's their dumbass teammates making dumbass decisions and it blows my mind how completely incapable people generally are at having a little bit of insight that maybe you're not quite as amazing as you think you are maybe you're not the best player in the world and there's room for improvement and it's not just your teammates now, after I said that, chances are every single person on that team feels the exact same way. 
<laughs> there are some people who are no, who know that they are bad, and I'm certainly not trying to say that that doesn't happen to somebody who is potentially very good, but they just don't have a team to play with, and they get matched up with people that kind of hold them back. That's certainly a possibility, but that's probably like 1% of people, and everybody else is just as bad as everybody they're bitching about, and they just don't have the capacity to understand that. And that kind of ruins the appeal of it all, right? Like, you know, again, you're seeing this event this amazing uh all these amazing production values these teams pulling off amazing play after play making the game look good and then you go in yourself and it's just like this isn't even the same game <laughs> nothing similar is happening here what the hell come on man this isn't fun at all especially when you actually go and see like how much how many countless hours could you find of like League of Legends players or Dota players just raging on the microphone going fu losing their minds over uh, their quote unquote teammates sucking and like why would you ever want to deal with that why what possibly could be fun about that I mean you know there's always some sort of appeal of just seeing somebody lose their shit but to the level that it appears to happen I don't know man I don't know, but, you know, again, I haven't experienced it myself, and I don't think I'm going to, so I can't really say with uh, any sort of definitiveness that, like, that's how it will be, that's how it is, but it really is just kind of like, you know, why, my time is limited enough as it is, why bother going in and getting into a whole other genre of gaming that could absorb countless hours of my life that will likely go the same way that Overwatch has gone for me, and it just, it makes me sad, because, again, you see this amazing teamwork and the appeal of the game just laid out starkly in front of you and you understand the chances of you actually being able to enjoy that particular aspect of the game are minuscule and probably not going to happen unless you grind through all of the suffering and the hatred that people have toward other people on the internet to prove yourself as like at least a solid player and then you can, you know, find other solid players and be like, hey, man, you want to group up, make a team, let's kind of, you know, move up further up and up, let's see where we can go, and then maybe from there you start to get noticed a little bit. Now, maybe a professional team is going to walk up to you and be like, hey, yo, you've proven yourself, you're really solid, we'd like to see how you work together with our team, and then it goes from there, but until that happens... It probably sucks. <laughs> That's just really sad. But anyway, let's move on from that. I cannot believe they started the last day with an entire symphonic orchestra. God damn. That was impressive. That was classy. I have to assume they were probably playing music specifically from Dota because every single time, you know, a piece of music started up, the crowd was like, you know, oh, hell yeah, woo! That kind of thing. So obviously they had to have recognized the music. And why would they not play Dota music at a Dota event? you know kind of obvious but still that was really cool but the entire time they just keep cutting over to uh this shield looking thing which apparently is an item called the Igus of the immortal which is basically the trophy that you get uh when you win the international but the entire time it's they have like this fog machine basically billowing out smoke from underneath it from all the way you know out of the like kind of pillarish looking thing that it was sitting atop and I'm just sitting here like, they keep cutting to this. They keep making this seem so goddamn special. This better be the goddamn cure to cancer for how important they're making it look. Like, what is... Something has to happen here. Something has to, like, pop out of this. And, you know, be like a stripper and a birthday cake or something. What is happening here? This is ridiculous. Focus on the music or something. Shit. Uh, it was crazy, but... That final day. That final day. I have to say, Wings... The team that won it, very impressive, and I really like teams like that, players like that, who show a vast diversity in the pool of characters that they can potentially pick. Like, they very rarely pick the same thing. I think the one thing they almost always had was a character called Elder Titan. Um, but other than that, it was so varied in their character picks, and the mastery they showed with all of them really proved like damn this is you know they kind of they deserve to be here and they deserve to win this they look amazing and that was real again another thing that kind of appeals to me is the idea of this isn't a marvel vs capcom 2 this isn't a game where you have a set kind of like 
let's actually let's compare it to Overwatch. In Overwatch, you are guaranteed to have a Lucio and a Zenyatta in any sort of moderately serious match because they are that goddamn useful. And then 90% of the time, you're going to have to have a McCree. Unless you're on a control map, you probably have to have a Reinhardt. And then from there, you're looking at like maybe a Genji, a Tracer, a Reaper, and then another tank, likely Zarya, maybe Winston. But the character diversity really just isn't there yet. Which you can't really blame on the game itself. Because you're looking at, again, Dota has a character pool of like 120 characters or something ridiculous like that. Overwatch has what? 20-something? It's just not the same. You don't have uh, that same level of diversity that you can be like, alright, this character is a valid replacement for this other character, so let's pick them instead and let's just have some fun with it. You're kind of locked into specific needs that have to be met and there's a limited character pool that can meet those needs and then chances are you have one character that stands out as superior in that role and thus why would you not pick them otherwise you're putting yourself at a disadvantage which you nobody intelligent would ever do in a competitive atmosphere um, so that was one of the big things that really appealed to me when watching was just I'm constantly seeing different characters I'm not just seeing the same oh yeah, this is the meta, this is, you know, there's eight viable characters and you get to pick five of them. And that's all that it is. You know, you're seeing constant fluctuation in team tactics in viability of certain characters. And then even then, when you see, you know, like, oh, okay, they clearly picked this character for this role, it's still possible for another character to come out and surprise you and be like, holy shit, I didn't think that they were going to be able to do that with this character, but they really shine right now. You know, it's not just oh, well, there's their carry, and that's clearly going to be the offensive powerhouse, and then there's no other alternative to it. It's really impressive just watching that and, again, seeing the diversity in capability. Really, Just really cool, really awesome to see, and that was, one of the, again, probably the biggest thing that appealed to me about the game itself. Um, so, yeah, that's really all I said was, like, you know, good shit, fun to watch. I will be back next year for sure like I'm definitely watching it from now on but the thing that got me the most the thing that got me the most if you listened to my Evo Nate talks about how they had Tasty Steve as the announcer who just really wasn't wasn't doing it on the in-house mic the international had a legitimate announcer they had a real one he had the voice he had the hype he had the proper volume holy shit professionalism man it's a real announcer Hell yeah! Made the event for me. Fuck all the gameplay, fuck everything else. They had a real announcer? Shit yeah, man. <laughs> but anyway, so my final my <laughs> my final thought regarding the whole thing is, you know, when it's happening, when uh, Wings goes up and they get the Igus of the Immortal and they lift it up, is it bad of me that whenever that happens, especially surrounding a quote-unquote nerdy culture where it's kind of expected of them to be you know potentially a little clumsy not terribly coordinated maybe potentially weak that uh they get that trophy and just immediately drop it is it bad is that bad am i evil for that <laughs> every time i see it i'm like drop it drop it please please drop it do it do it i want this to happen ruin the moment <laughs> and i guess i assume that probably makes me a bad person but i am okay with it i embrace it and i enjoy it just like I enjoyed the international. Really fun shit. So, for those of you, you know, if you're not interested at all, I would, like I said, I don't think I need to play the game. Well, I certainly know I don't need to play the game to enjoy it now because I don't, I have never played the game and I enjoyed the event. But, uh, I don't think I'm ever gonna play the game. But I'm certainly gonna be looking at it, uh, far closer than I ever did before. It was very fun. It was very interesting. And I highly recommend. Uh, if you're just, you know, again, just looking for a spectacle, check it out. Might be surprised. So, thank you for listening, as always. And I'll talk to you next time.